Hey people, it's Nias talking. It's of a Black Heroes video. This is Frank Critchlow. This is from his obituary from The Guardian. So here he goes, a restaurant owner and activist. He stood up to police persecution. The community activist Frank Critchlow, who has died aged 78 after a long illness, was a stalwart symbol of black urban resistance in the face of police persecution. This he achieved through withstanding the trials and tribulations visited in the Mangrove restaurant, which he established in the Notting Hill area, West London, in the late 1960s. Born in Trinidad in the Woodbrook district of the capital, Port of Spain, Critchlow arrived in Britain on the SS Columbi in June 1953. Five years earlier, the Empire Windrush, with 492 passengers on board, had entered the history of multiculturalism as the ship bringing the first large group of Caribbean migrants to the UK after the Second World War. Initially living in Paddington, Critchlow recalled in the 1990s in an interview with Colin Prescott and Eric Honey that it could be a week before he saw another black person. Guys used to hang out on Sutherland Avenue where there was a club called Johnson's owned by an African run by a Jamaican. People used to look forward to going and everything started mushrooming from there. For a time, <coughs> Critchlow worked for British Rail. Then in 1956, formed the Starlight 4 band which had some success with appearances on radio and television and in the cinema advertisement. He used the money to open the El Rio Cafe in 1959 at 127 Westbourne Park Road, the interior decorated with fishing nets purloined from Southend, which became a gathering place for the black community, a likely first stop for those arriving in London from the West Indies. As the photographer and writer Val Wilmer notes, Critchlow had links with and benefited from the experience of an earlier group of settlers from the pre-war and maritime era. Soho's African entrepreneurs, they would all have known each other from the gambling tables. In December 1960, the Rio attracted a fine as a common gaming house, certainly with the Nine Hill race riots of 1958 begun by gangs of white youths, still a raw in recent memory. For black people to congregate was as much a matter of safety as sociability. A decade later, when I moved into the area, looking anxiously over one's shoulder was still par for the course, but slumming it at the Rio also appealed to white customers. Critchlow said of those days, it was amazing. White and black people socializing like you and I could not imagine today. Christine Keeler, who used to call me dad, John Profumo, they all came to the club. Colin McGinn's and all sorts of art, arty types came too. They loved the spirit of the place and felt released from their own stiff culture. At the Rio, Keeler met her Jamaican lover, Lucky Gordon, a coupling that fueled the defining political sexual scandal of the 60s, the Profumo, Profumo affair, which culminated in the resignation of the Tory Secretary of State for war. According to Critchlow himself, quoted in Tony Gold's Inside Outsider, The Life and Times of Colin McGinn's 1993. The Rio was a school or university for hustlers, attracting the rebellious and street smart. Nottingham Hill had become the UK's black culture capital, and in 1968, Critchlow went up market, opening the mangrove at 8 All Saints Road, going from a sleazy cafe to a proper restaurant. In the words of Darkus Howe, who had gone straight to the Rio on his arrival in 1962 and subsequently worked at the mangrove, West Indian cuisine was enjoyed by locals and visiting celebrities alike, including writers, musicians, and intellectuals. The clientele encompassed C.L.R. James, Richard Neville, Lord Tony Gifford, Jimi Hendrix, Vanessa Redgrave, The Four Tops, The Cast of the Avengers, Nina Simone, Marvin Gaye, Sarah Vaughan, Sammy Davis Jr., and Diana Ross, and the Supremes. People were waiting in cars outside in cars until people would be waiting outside in cars until tables were free. The place would be packed and we see the police peeping through the windows, Critchlow reminisced. At the interface of liberal counterculture, radical cheek, and ordinary community life, the mangrove was by no means a dangerous drug den. Yet the Nottingdale constabulary seemed determined to close it down. Critchlow was continuously targeted with raids and fines for such petty licensing offenses as allowing dancing or serving food after 11 pm. Although spurious police claims about drug dealing on the police could not be made to stick. In the first year, they raided my restaurant six times, and six times they found nothing. Protesting against police harassment in 1973, Critchlow, Howe, and seven others were arrested for riot and affray. The highly publicized trial at the Old Bailey, which lasted for 55 days the following year, was a cause celebrate, exposing racism within the police force almost 30 years before the McPherson report. The Mangrove Nine were acquitted. It was a turning point for black people, Critchlow said. A poor trial, the attitudes of the of the police, the home office of everyone towards the black community. After this win, he set up the Mangrove Community Association and as an offshoot of the restaurant, providing advice and assistance, nurturing local products to improve housing, establish youth facilities and services for the elderly, and help rehabilitate ex-offenders and those with drug and alcohol addiction. Despite being well known throughout the community for his anti-drug stance, in 1979, Critchlow was charged alongside five others with drug offenses, of which he was again cleared. In 1988, 
88 police officers responsible to the Dep Deputy Assistant Commissioner Paul Condon used sledgehammers to break into the mangrove allegedly seized drugs. Critchlow spent five weeks in custody before being granted bail on conditions that banned him from going near his business for over a year, from which the mangrove never recovered. When the evidence was demolished by a legal team consisting of the solicitor Gareth Pierce from the radical firm of Bernberg & Co., Michael Mansfield QC and Courtney Griffiths QC, the jury threw out the, uh, the charges. Suing the Met in 1992 for false imprisonment, battery and malicious prosecution, Critchlow was awarded record damages of £50,000. And back then, £50,000 was worth a lot of money. You could have bought several houses with that money. Anyway, of equal importance to his involvement with civil rights was his connection with cultural venues, cultural ventures, and he was a central figure in the development of the Notting Hill Carnival. The award-winning Mangrove Steel Band was founded in 1980. The solicitor, Benedict Bernberg, said, Frank was a great person who stood out among others around him. Never better, always it seemed to me cool in the face of discrimination and prejudice. The community and development expert Vince Hines observed, because of his work, Britain has become a more tolerant, caring and balanced society. He is survived by his son Knowlton and daughters Lenora, Francesca and Amanda from his former partnership with Lucy Addington. Frank Gilbert Critchlow, community activist, born 13th July 1932, died 15th September 2010. Well, I hope you've enjoyed that. Please comment, rate, share, and subscribe. If you want to support this channel, leave my cash app. If you want to follow me on Instagram, I'll leave that there as well. If you want to buy one of my t-shirts, I'll leave that there as well. Peace.